So you might recall from the Inkscape section, there was uh, quite a bit of talk and education on blends and what blends are and how those blends get assigned in Inkscape via the color palette. Certain colors within that palette had certain blends assigned to them and blends had different widths. And some, some palettes like Rough and Deep Rough have no blends and some have two, like uh, Sand has an inner and an outer uh, inset. Um, same thing with Lake. Well, now we're going to take that, we're going to go a little bit deeper here, and we're going to see what those blends look like inside of Blender. Um, the materials uh, get assigned to shapes inside of Blender, vertexes, vertex painting concepts, uh, and a bunch of other things so you can understand what's happening inside of Blender. So before we do that, though, we need to talk, and let me give you the, the high-level reminder of what blends are. Um, and it would make sense to go back and watch that video in Inkscape on, on blends and what they are. It would help you. But remember that blends are very uh, specialized meshes that go between two meshes that help uh, soften the transition between two meshes. So you can see here what you see highlighted in orange here, this here, this here, and this here. We've got four different blends highlighted. And the blends are blending from here. We got a green that's here to a fairway. So this blend would blend from green to fairway. And remember this fairway would go from, this fairway goes to semi. So this blend would be from fairway, fairway to semi. And this semi to rough. And then we got rough to sand. So those are the concepts. And this is what it looks like. We got this nice soft edge here, which looks much more natural. So in order to understand what's happening in Blender and how blends work and vertices work and vertex painting, it's important to understand some basic 3D shapes, some basic 3D shape concepts. So first of all, when we're talking about 3D modeling, all shapes in 3D modeling consist of points. A point is the most basic function of 3D modeling. And a point is a simply a reference to a point in space on the XYZ coordinate system. You might remember this from trigonometry back in high school where you know if you want a point in space has three coordinates xyz um, and then you can connect two points and if you do you get a line okay so a line connects two points now let's say that you um have uh you you connect two or more lines to a single point so let's say you have three points in space and which form more or less a triangle so you connect those three points via lines, which forms a triangle. Those points now are vertices because they are connecting or they're the common point for two different lines. Okay. And what those three vertices form is what we call a plane or a tri, or sometimes in Blender, they refer to it as a face. So when you take three points, you connect them via lines, and that makes a face or a plane or a triangle is what we call it. And now those lines that connect those are often referred to as edges because it's the edge of your triangle. Okay, it's the edge of your plane, it's the edge of your tri. Um, and then that plane can be assigned a material, and that material will fill up that entire triangle, that entire plane. It might be just as simple as I want to put a green material on there, you know, or a material that looks purple, or a material that looks gray. Um, or you could actually assign a material that's got some texture to it. So it looks like, you know, it looks like grass or it looks like sand. But the important thing to understand is that when you assign a material to a tri or a plane, it fills that entire thing. And if you think about it, it becomes a hard edge on the outside of that. So let's look in Blender. Let me explain these concepts. And if you took the Blender tutorial, you would have got some of this already. And I do highly recommend you take that Blender tutorial because some of the things in my navigation here will make much more sense. So the slide earlier that I showed you with the blends, this is the exact same spot in the course, but inside of Blender now. So I've got here, I've got my green highlighted, and I've got a blend here. Now in this case, my blend says, green it's given my green blend material which i just have assigned as pink so you can see that this entire blend okay doesn't look like much of a blend because it's not doing that transition that we saw before right well that's because we have a material assigned to it and our the material that we assign to all of our blends so we can see them in blender is pink okay so just keep that in mind so you can see i've got my one two three 
and four different blends that are all pink. So this one, for example, is my fairway that got extended. This is a semi. You can see it's got the semi material and this is my rough. So let's look at some of these things I referred to earlier, like, for example, some points. So I'm just going to arbitrarily um, pick this mesh right here, which is my semi. And I'm going to come up here to this little drop down from my overlays. And I'm going to turn on, first of all, statistics, which is going to give me some numbers over here. And I'm also going to come back here and I'm going to turn on wireframe. So now you guys can see what that mesh is actually made up of. And you can see when I do that, you can see all my points, my, my vertices, my lines, and my faces. So also what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit tab to go into edit mode. And when I do that, I can use these three buttons up here to select different things in this mesh. So I'm going to do the first one here, which is my vertex select. If I highlight over that, this is select mode, vertex select. So if I click on any of these vertices, and remember a vertice is just a point that is connecting multiple lines. So you can see that this vertice connects this line, this line, this line, and this line. And if I zoom in, you can see that there's somewhat, it's hard to see here, but you can see that these are actually highlighted. So this vertice is connecting one, two, three, four. You might think, oh, what about this one? That is a different mesh. Okay, so that's why you don't see it on that one. Okay, now, so that is my vertices. Now, if I come over here, I can select a line or an edge. Okay, see here, line or an edge. So I'm selecting these edges, and you can see all my edges. Now, if I try to select out here, well, that's not in the mesh that I currently am editing, so I can't select any of these lines or edges out here. Let me go to face select mode. In face select mode, you can see now that I've selected this triangle. As I was doing this, you would have seen that my uh, statistics up here, so I have one of 2,516 meshes selected, I'm sorry, faces selected in this particular shape. If I hold down shift, I've now got two of 2,516, three, four, five. And again, same thing, I can go back to vertices and it says I have one of 2,516 vertices selected. Okay, so it just gives you an idea of what a point, a vertice, a face, try, and how those relate to each other. So now that you understand the basics of 3D modeling, you know, what a point is, what an edge is, what a line is, what a plane, a triangle, uh, let's talk about vertex painting. So in vertex painting, um, we essentially assign or paint a vertex. And you might be thinking, well, how do you paint a point in space? Well, essentially when you paint it, the color that you paint it radiates outward from that vertex. And if you think about it radiating, out, radiating outward and, and fading as it goes outward, in that case, okay, the planes and triangles that uh, that, that vertex helped define now no longer have to um, be completely filled with the same material, okay? What you assign to that vertex, okay, can bleed over but not take up the entire triangle. And I know that might be foreign here, but we're going to show you again, if you're more of a visual person, what that looks like in Blender. So that color that we're going to paint that vertex is going to represent a material, and that material is later assigned in Unity, okay? And we're going to call these channels. So you're going to vertex paint, and you can vertex paint up to four colors or four channels. You can vertex something black, you can vertex something red, you can paint it green or you can paint it blue. There is no other options, black, red, green, or blue. And there's no blending either of this. You can't paint it like a combination of black and red. It gets painted black or it gets painted red, okay? Um, more on that in a minute. Now, color to, map, color to material mapping is specific to the shape and is assigned via the shader in Unity. Okay, what does that mean? Well, you see we only have four different channels here. Well, that can mean that the red channel, when assigned to a fairway, 
okay, can be a different material than the red channel assigned to a bunker or red channel assigned to a rough. The red channel on a fairway might represent the fairway material inside of Unity. The red channel inside of rough is going to represent the rough material inside of Unity. And it is specific to that mesh. It is specific to that shape based on what we do in Unity. So that's why I said earlier, no matter what you paint something inside of Inkscape, you can paint it rough, green, whatever, you can change that material later on, okay? Um, it just makes it easier to automate things if we do it correctly from the get-go. But if you change your mind later on that you want a rough to look like a bunker, or I don't know why you do that, or a rough to look like a semi, you can absolutely do that, okay? So what's this look like? Let's look, go back into Blender. And this is the same material or the same example we've been working on before. We've got our green, we've got a, a blend, and we've got a fairway, and we've got a blend, and we've got a, uh, a semi blend, rough blend, and then we got our bunker. Okay. And you might recall, remember that our bunkers have two blends we've got our outer and our inner blend. So these all have materials assigned to them now. You can see when I click on my green, I've got the green material. If I go in the bunker, I've got my bunker material. And remember, when we assign materials, it takes up the whole plane, the whole triangle. So this triangle right here, it's completely filled with the semi-material. And even this blend, okay, is assigned a semi-blend material. We're doing that so it's easy to see where the blends work. Let's change this, our view, so we can view the channels, the vertex painting. And this is done, okay, when we imported in the scripts and the OPCD tools, did your vertex painting for you? And how you view that is by hitting this little down arrow here and clicking on attribute. And now we're seeing the channels, of the vertex painting, and the channels that were assigned to those vertices. And uh, if you recall, where we had four options. We had red, you see lots of red. We had black, you do see some black here. We've got green and we've got blue. Now, so what do we've got here? Well, we've got red assigned to this green mesh. Um, and keep in mind that this is just the vertex painting. It's not the material, it's just vertex painting. We vertex painting this whole thing red. However, inside of Unity, red, Okay, in this mesh, we'll get assigned the green texture, the green, not, not green color, but green as in green grass, green as in your green that you're putting on. It'll get assigned that texture. In Blender, we're just assigning it this color so that we can easily see what it is. In Unity, though, is when the texture gets applied. So same thing here is that this is our fairway mesh. Um, it is assigned the fairway material. And that red is going to be represented in Unity by the fairway material. Where this comes in, and you can see the same thing with our semi, our rough here. Now our bunker is going to be, well, let's come back to our bunker. That's a more complicated one. So let's look at this blend right here. This is a very simple one. So this blend here is our semi blend. So this is the blend that was added to our semi rough that we created. And remember that was that 12 centimeter, centimeter blend. Now the material is that pink material that we've seen. However, the vertex painting, you can tell, goes from red on this side, which is our fairway, and black on this side, which meets up against our rough here. So for this particular blend, our red will represent semi, our black will represent rough okay that is specific to this blend let's look at another blend to give you the same idea so if i move over this way what's this blend well it's the same it's got the red channel going to black however in this blend we've got fairway here we've got semi here so this blend red will represent and get the fairway texture black we'll get the semi texture. So this blend is our fairway blend, which was assigned via Inkscape, via the fairway color palette, and it will go from fairway to semi, and that gets assigned inside of Unity. 
So the important thing to understand here is that these color channels, red, black, green, and blue, represent textures inside of Unity, and those textures that get assigned are specific to the shape that you're working on. Now let's go to a complicated one here, bunkers. Bunker, which I have now highlighted, remember has an outer blend, and it actually has an inner blend that you see here. For our bunkers, our main color, if you want to call it, or the color that makes up most of this shape or mesh is blue, okay? So blue inside the bunker inside of Unity will represent a sandy texture. Now, if I zoom in here a little closer and I go towards the outside of this bunker, you can see that blue starts to blend into green. Green inside of a bunker in Unity will represent like a lip or a dirt type material. So this will be our, our inner lip of the bunker that you're gonna see like almost like the, uh, the, the landscaping cut down through the earth. So it's where the, the dirt is gonna meet the sand. Remember sand or the, is the, the blue texture, dirt is gonna be the green texture. So you can see that this blend goes from blue and blends into green. And then we've got this uh, bunker blend here. So see, bunker blend, it goes from red and red is going to be the same as this green channel, I think. Don't quote me on that. Uh, I can't recall off the top of my head, but that material will match this green, I believe. Actually, this might be a hard line. This is, I think is going to be, actually, I think this is going to be more of like a, a, a grassy material. And then black. What do you think black's going to be? Now think about it. Black is going to be rough, okay, in this case, because bunker, this edge is meeting rough. So this is going to go from some green material to rough material to blend that in here. Actually, we could go back. Let me just, I can verify this. Um, good exercise, which is, let me go back to my presentation, backspace, and go here. You can see, yes. Uh, so you can see here that the, yes, the inner lip here is that, uh, in that case, the the black, and, the, and then the red is the rough here. So moving back over here. This is that same blend I just pointed out. So uh, I know this is a difficult concept to understand, and this is why I only wanted you guys to do like one or two holes first, so you get all this stuff into Unity, and you're gonna be able to see what this ultimately will look like. But the important thing to understand is you only have four channels to work with, and those channels, okay, will represent what materials or textures get assigned to those shapes inside of Unity, okay? Um, not much you need to like do here in this lesson. Um, these are just concepts I want you to keep in mind as we're going through the rest of the Blender OPCD tools.